Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar um, about how to change your um, playing game into your writing a game or design a game, right? So first of all, before uh, our speaker, Yixing, um, do the presentation and let me introduce um, what is Bay Coding Club. All right, uh, Bay Coding Club is a cutting edge of um, technology uh, K-12 education academy. And we also have the uh, mathematics. mathematics. <clears throat> we located at Bay Area, California. And uh, our offer um, uh, in different uh, uh, levels of the technology classes, such as the uh, um, Scratch, Roblox, Robotics, Java, Python, uh, of course, we have a lot of uh, competition um, courses such as USACO, uh, USACO uh, short for United States American of Computing um, Olympiad. Um, and we also has AP Computer Science. We have ACSAL, American Computer Science League, uh, those kind of uh, test or competition course. In our team include senior technology and education experts who work at like Google, Apple, and uh, some of the uh, other uh, big companies. And we also have some of the uh, professors as our consultants, such as uh, computer science professor at Stanford and MIT and SUNY Albany, etc. Mm, we teach right now in English, and we're about to, to, to develop our courses to uh, mainland China uh, in Chinese. But right now, we don't have Chinese um, class. We only have the English version. All right, uh, this is the roadmap of our Bay Coding Club development. Uh, we established in 2015 uh, as a nonprofit at Upstate New York. After that, we just uh, keep going until we move to California at 2019. And we open our online courses uh, before pandemic. Um, and we have uh, partners with uh, a lot of uh, local communities and school district. Uh, this is the course that we have at Bay Coding Club. Uh, um, we have um, the courses according to the age groups and the grades. We have uh, Python, Java script as a um, uh, lang computer language track. And we have a com 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 competition track as um, musical, ACSL, uh, AP Computer Science. And we also have uh, a lot of uh, camps, such as summer camp, winter camp. We have a spring camp. And we have some special um, courses, such as game design, uh, like uh, Roblox, uh, Minecraft. And we have uh, some of other courses, such as um, robotics. Robotics Club, Python Club. And this is some of our um, courses online. You can uh, trace the course and you can register, of course, uh, online our website at baycodingclub.com. We provide three kind of uh, classes such as group class, which is have students uh, about uh, um, over eight eight students in a group class. And we have a semi-private class means we have a two or four students in one class, one teacher, two or four students called semi-private. And we have one-on-one -on -one classes means uh, you and your teacher in one class. And you can choose from our website, baycodingclub.com. Um, we set up a lot of pathways for different uh, kind of students, um, such as AP Computer Science Pass, uh, we provide um, the, the evaluations before you register. If you want to do a free evaluation to uh, think about which, which kind of class you want to register, just let us know, call us or email us, and we can arrange a free evaluation for you to let you know what's your pathways for, um, for you according to your goals. 
And we have a lot of any pathways, such as uh, we give a lot of uh, design um, hobbies of students, designs uh, a lot of uh, design paths for you. Uh, and we also give the design um, hobbies um, students, uh, such as web design pathways and uh, game design pathways a lot, according to your um, uh, uh, likes. And we have a lot of other pathways for software engineers and for um, AP computer science case. And we have uh, the ACSL right now is on registration um, uh, situation. Uh, so you can log on our website and to uh, register ACSL. As we all know, ACSL will just have their contest at December. So uh, this is a good time for you to register. So you can, uh, uh, to browse our uh, website and to um, uh, to know more information. This is our uh, ACSL team. We won a lot of uh, rewards such as gold, silver, uh, medals, and we have the team of first place medals as well. And we also open our Roblox, uh, uh, no robotics club and which we um, uh, have only 10 bucks a week. And we have a coach and to get you to do some of uh, robotics uh, explorations every week. Um, you can follow the coach. Um, and uh, we aim to get you to explore more your potentials about embedded system, uh, such as the software combined with the hardware. And we also get you to attend the future competitions such as FLL or RC, uh, FRC, the first robotic competition in the United States. And we also have Python Club. Uh, I know many of you has already passed uh, our le uh, Python level four. Um, I think it's a good time for you to register Python Club for you to practice because we have a, a coach and to get you to do the project in the club. We meet with your peers and your coach once a week, and then you can hone your skills, which you learned from Bay Coding Club, right? So come and join us at Bay Coding Club at Python Club. And we also have um, Robotic Club, Game Design Club. Yeah, just find out on our website. Okay, uh, this is pretty, pretty much all that I uh, introduce. Um, I will introduce you um, to uh, the speaker as Yixing is here. Uh, today's speaker is Yixing Xu. Yixing um, is our uh, outstanding teacher at Bay Coding Club. Um, and she also is the, our um, curriculum specialist. And uh, she taking charge of her design of her curriculum. And she also is the author of our book, Python for case, which you can find the book online or at Amazon. Um, you can find the link on our website and you can buy the book, Python for case. Uh, the book is all about our project and uh, there has a lot of practice questions you can use. All right, I will just give the time to Yixing, let her introduce herself more. Thank you, Yixing. Hi, thank you, Ruby. Yeah, so that is me. She's basically covered everything about me. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Yixing. Um, you can call me, I don't know, Miss Yixing and call me teacher, whatever you want during this meeting. Um, I think what I will do is, so the chat is on, so you can ask me any questions throughout the um, webinar. But yeah, um, to further introduce myself, I... Um, I, well, I love game design and I love gaming, as you know. I'll actually get into my favorite games later throughout the presentation. Um, and I am also, I go to the University of Toronto. Um, so yeah, Canada, <laughs> yes. And I am a teacher here as Ruby has covered. And I guess I'll get right into the presentation. How about that? How does that sound? Okay. So I'm sure you all recognize this, um, this presentation. It is um, obviously 
it obviously resembles some of our favorite games, right? Or one of our favorite games. Um, if you don't recognize it, shame on you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so turning gaming into game design. So um, we'll cover a few things. So first of all, what are games? Um, some of my favorite games, how are games made? And then how you can actually get into gaming or game design. Um, and I'm mostly talking about game design. Yeah, I don't know too much about professional gaming. So if you're here for professional gaming, um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So first off, what are games? Just to get a deeper understanding of these things that we play and love, right? And to further delve into like maybe some of the motivations behind why we play it. And therefore, you know, as an extension, why those motivations might make us want to make games, right? So let's start off with PC games. So these are played on the computer or like PC stands for personal computer, right? So this can either be on like a cool gaming laptop, a cool gaming PC. It could be on a regular laptop. I play all my games on my laptop and um, it's not exactly built for gaming. So it doesn't handle these games pretty um, too well. And so that gets into, you know, it's high maintenance, right? Most of these require very big specs. Um, when I say specs, I mean specifications, right? So your system, your PC system has a few requirements, right? Or it has a few specifications. For example, it has RAM. Um, it has like, you know, storage. So RAM is just how quickly you can process your games, right? Or like process everything that you're doing or everything that you're using your computer for. For example, you might have like several windows open. You might have Discord open, Google Chrome, Spotify. I'm reading basically all my windows. Yeah. Um, so that's what RAM handles. It handles all the things you're doing right now on your computer. And then there's also storage, which is just how many games can you download? Maybe you can have like a hundred games at a time. Maybe you can only handle like three. I can only handle like three. So yeah, don't abuse your computer too much. Um, yeah, so these are very high maintenance in terms of graphics. So I'm sure you guys all know the term FPS, right? Not first person shooter, frames per second. Yes, that is something that haunts all of us, I'm sure. When I play Valorant, for example, so you probably already have an insight into one of my favorite games. Um, my FPS is pretty low. My average FPS, frames per second, um, is pretty low because, you know, the graphics are very heavy, very high maintenance. They are definitely very top tier. And so usually you want better specs to process those. Um, yeah. Okay. Most people just build their own. It's pretty cheap and can run games smoothly. That is absolutely correct. Yes. You can definitely build your own if you can get your own computer parts. For example, you know, like, a, um, I don't know, like, you know, the hardware to build your PC, then yes, you can definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Next. So we've gone over PC games. Another one is mobile slash ta tablet games. I'm sure many of you play those. Um, some notable titles are probably Crossy Road, Flappy Bird. Um, I don't know. This was really popular in my time when I was in like middle school, but Temple Run. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. Some nods, some thumbs up. Actually, I can't see nods. Only like one person has their camera on. Yeah. So if you want to nod, you can turn on your camera to nod vigorously. Yeah. So these are pretty usually low maintenance just because um, oh, there's a shake of the head. Yeah. Temple Run's not too hot right now. So um, these are pretty low maintenance simply because your phone isn't too powerful of a device anyways. Um, it can only handle so much in a small little tiny device. Right. Um, and then also Games are sometimes, the games you find on there are sometimes just compressed version of what are originally PC games. For example, if you play League, um, I don't play League, League of Legends, right? Then you know League of Legends Wild Rift. That is a mobile version. Valorant is also coming out with their mobile version of the game. Call of Duty also has their mobile version. Those are usually pretty, those are heavy, like high maintenance in terms of mobile games. Yeah. So cool. Whereas Flappy Bird, that is actually pixelated. So those graphics are definitely more, you know, lighter for our devices to handle. Um, I got a few more chats. Um, Valorant is anime Counter-Strike. I actually, I, I think so. CSGO, right? I heard that a lot of people, you know, 
um, transferred to Valorant from CSGO and they're really good. But Valorant was actually my first FPS game. In this case, when I say FPS, I mean first person shooter. Okay, let's move on. So now let's move on to console slash VR games, okay? So these are extremely high maintenance usually because, you know, sometimes it's to the point, it's so high maintenance to the point that they literally require a different device, right? Like a console is a completely different, you know, device. It is like, you know, for example, a PlayStation or an Xbox, right? Sometimes that also could just be marketing schemes, right? They just want you to buy their consoles. And so they only offer games exclusively on that console, right? Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, marketing scheme. <laughs> yeah. So, or they're so demanding that they don't expect your PC to be able to handle it, right? So they have a separate device. Um, also VR. So I don't know how familiar some of you are v with VR. VR is definitely still like, you know, new and still getting advancements uh, made in VR, right? Um, it, is, it stands for virtual reality. So these are games where you can have like a headset, right? Like for example, Oculus headset, right? And you can, um, it, it's been able to track the room around you. So it knows what kind of space you're in. And that way, when you turn, then you're able to like, you know, it's, it's almost like you're in the game and in the environment, right? Um, another familiar one might be AR, right? That is also relatively new. Um, a good example of AR uh, is what's it called? Pokemon Go. So AR is augmented reality. It's where you can actually just be on your phone. And then if you like take a picture of your space or something, or if you're just like, um, if you're, what's it called? Just, just scanning the space with your camera or something, then it will actually have an object. It'll spawn an object on the screen and it'll look like it's there and it'll stay in that exact spot. Yeah. So those are really cool. Um, yeah, any questions so far? Are you confused about any of these games? Or do you have any questions specifically about any of these games, any of these platforms? Going once, going twice, sold. Okay, let's move on then. Okay, so now that we've covered the platforms that these games can be offered, right? So these are different platforms. There is mobile, PC, console right? So these are all different platforms. Sometimes games will allow you to cross play, right? Or play cross platform, right? So those would be really cool games. Um, for example, Among Us, right? Speaking of Among Us, this presentation, the template is literally Among Us, right? Very cute. I like this template a lot. Um, but yeah, Among Us is cross play, which means that you can play on mobile and you can play on PC, and um, it will allow users on both platforms to play with each other. Yeah. So cool. Any questions? No? OK, moving on then. So now that we've talked about platforms, we can talk about genres now. So um, genres are just different types of gameplay now. So for example, there's multiplayer online battle arena. Those, that's very popular. That's those short for that is MOBA, right? Um, examples of these are Dota um, and League of Legends, right? I don't know if any of you have played it. Definitely strategy games. Um, I have never, I've never touched a MOBA. Um, just personally, I do not like the graphics and just the gameplay elements. For example, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm just more accustomed to RPG. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. And then there's party games. For example, Among Us. Great party game, right? Another party game. Um, some horror games are party games. Phasmophobia. Um, SCP party, right? SCP. What does that stand for? Secure Containment uh, Protect, I think. Yeah, I don't know if you guys, I know I know some of you watch Twitch, even when you're not supposed to, because some of those Twitch streamers, you know, either play, you know, horror games that you guys are not supposed to be watching, or they, they you know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I know you guys are familiar with some of those titles, because I have definitely seen, like, for example, offline TV play SCP, right? Yeah. Cool. If you guys can think of any other games of the genres I'm going over, you can definitely just spam them in the chat. Okay, not spam. I'm exaggerating. Please don't spam. 
I don't like spam. Okay, so strategy, there's term-based or real-time. So real-time, so some examples of real-time strategy, for example, might be like, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? The Empire's Game. Oh, I forgot. That was my bad. But um, an example of term-based strategy is um, I used to really like this game. I'm already getting into my favorite games without getting into my favorite game slide yet. So an example of my favorite strategy, a, a turn-based strategy game for me is Wizard 101. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, some, with it. Um, you can nod vigorously um, or you can type in the chat, yes, or you can type in a chat, you noob, you don't know how to play games. You don't know any good games. All the games you've named so far dumb yeah don't be mean to me please um but yeah those are some examples um sandbox so sandbox if you're not familiar with this um with this genre sandbox games are basically just games with a an objective but it's also in an open world open-ended environment like minecraft. where exactly i was just about to say a perfect example is minecraft right so minecraft you have an objective you want to get to the ender world and you want or nether world and then you want to like you know kill the ender dragon right and um but usually people will you know take a very long detour and they'll build houses they'll like you know um i don't know raise an entire empire they'll like conquer oh, yeah. lands shelter kind of oh yes exactly yeah 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 that's exactly right um i'm not familiar with genshin impact but i believe genshin impact is also another example um uh genshin impact though is more rpg than sandbox though it's definitely a lot more of a storyline but yeah all Wait, those games what kind that of genres like uh i don't know if you heard of it like mm -hmm. hero wars it's not I haven't good. actually heard of it. Uh, I, I sound so familiar. I feel like I feel like I feel like I've heard my friends talk about it. It might be if I'm thinking of the correct game. It's similar to League of Legends and therefore is a MOBA. If I'm thinking of the correct game, I don't know if I'm thinking of the correct game. Yeah. Well, isn't Minecraft um, also kind of like half survival? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. When it's yeah, you get yes. to choose your like mm -hmm. game mode. Yeah, yeah, you get to choose your game mode, definitely. It is definitely a survival-based um, sandbox, but yeah. So sandbox is basically very like loose gameplay because it allows you to explore the world. Um, and also, yeah, we'll get into Minecraft more. There are definitely a lot more cooler gameplay elements or development elements of um, Minecraft, but yes, thank you. Um, survival and horror. So we can definitely think of a few. So Ethan already thought of Minecraft, right? And then also Phasmophobia. Is that horror? That is horror. That is kind of horror. Phasmophobia, if you don't know, is basically like Ghostbusters. Like um, you go and try and banish exile ghosts or um, yeah, monsters from people's haunted houses. I'm not get, going to get into it too much because I know some of us are scared of it, and that's completely fine. Um, uh, SCP, like I named before. Um, let me look in the chat. Teddy. Um, I'm actually not familiar with Teddy. I think, is that just, yeah. I, I Yeah, I'm not familiar with Teddy. I, I can think of it. I have an idea in my mind, but um, or I have an image, sorry, in my mind, but I'm not too familiar with it um what's another horror game i i'm so tempted to name more titles because i definitely know a bunch but i don't want you guys to search these up because these are definitely pretty gory graphics so i'm probably not going to name them um let's see so shooter games so we can definitely think of a few a lot right shooter games are very popular um call of duty halo i've actually played I, I, when I was younger, I played a lot of the Halo games with my sister co-op. I was too scared to play them alone, but I played them as co-op with my sister, yeah. Um, I played Halo 3 and Halo 2, I believe, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, ah, Valorant. Why did it take me so long to think of that? CSGO, I know that's already been mentioned. Um, Apex Legends. Um, yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Sorry. 
Destiny, yes, yes, Destiny. Yeah, that is purely played on the console, I believe. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like Doom Eternal. Yes, yes. Wow, yeah, you know quite a few. You're familiar. Yes, I can definitely tell we have a gamer here. Totally accurate battle simulator. Rich Rob. Totally accurate battle, battle simulator. Are you talking about one of the games that we named? Or is that supposed to be a name of a game? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. Totally accurate battle simulator. Are you talking about Valorant? Are you talking about all the shooter games that we na named? Because yes, they're definitely very accurate. <laughs> Valorant though has a lore, has lore behind it. I don't know about the other shooter games, never played them. Um, I mean, of course, Halo has its own storyline, right? Um, but yeah, Valorant has its own lore. Pretty interesting. It's also got a cinematic trailer. Yeah, cool stuff. Most, um... Compared to Valorant, most other shooter games usually have mm. bigger worlds and stuff instead of just being like sort of Maps. an arena, just one game mode, you know? Mm, yeah, like I see. one open world. Yes, I've seen Overwatch, for example. Um, Wait, Overwatch, do any of you know like Brawl Stars? What genre is that? I don't know it. Wait, Brawl Stars? Yeah, like it's a mobile game. Oh, Brawl Stars. I feel like I've seen a friend play it. Is it like one of those like small characters and like yeah ah the colorful small characters, right? Yeah. Yes, I think I think I remember seeing it. I don't know what genre it is. I've never played it. I just remember seeing like the images, and it's it's like a very cute game. Um, I don't know. I'm sorry, I would not be able to answer that. Yeah. But good question. If anyone is familiar with Brawl Stars, you can definitely try to assign it to a genre. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Any questions? Anyone? Yes, no, maybe so. It's clear we have a lot of gamers here. Going once, going twice. Sold. Okay. Finally, we're moving on to favorite games. Um, cool. So some of my favorite games. Starting off, Wizard 101. So I've included images of the like game, the, the thumbnail image of the game, right? And then I've also included images of seeing it in, you know, game, right? Um, so this is a more PG, right? Um, which stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. And it does have a storyline, and that is usually what occurs with role-playing games. So role-playing games, what they are, I actually don't know why I didn't include RPG in my previous slide. Why didn't I include it? What? Okay, my bad. So RPG role-playing game usually means you are playing in the role of something in a story, right? So in this case, in Wizard 101, you play in the role of a wizard who is trying to return, restore peace to the res wizardry like dimensions and worlds, right? So there are several worlds, very beautiful game. Um, it's definitely an open world. You can explore, you can complete side quests and you can just, you know, if you wanted, you don't even have to complete the objective. You can just live life in Wizard 101. There's also a PVP aspect to it. There is actually an arena where you can, so PVP, what that stands for is player versus player. So usually it's PVE, player versus everyone. This usually means like, you know, player versus like NPCs or, you know, whatnot. Um, in this case, it has PVE elements and PVP. So the PVP, unfortunately, that's only contained within a small part of the game. It is specifically in the arena, what they call the arena. Yeah. Um, and of course, it has several maps because, you know, it has different maps according to different worlds. Right. And yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the RPG aspect of it. You role play as a wizard. Right. And you get to choose your school. You get to cast spells. Um, and then also it is a turn based combat system. So I don't know if you can see right here. Right. These are cards. You can select spells and then um, you either have spells that attack everyone. This, for example, is Meteor Strike. It attacks everyone. You can Isn't see that, that just like Clash Royale. Um, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is very similar. Yes. It is basically like Clash Royale where you can select like, you know, um, Cards, spells, summon. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know. Um, this is very old anime. But someone brought up anime before about how Valorant is the anime version of CSGO. But um, it is very similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! 
I don't know if you guys know Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a very old anime. Definitely one of the OG. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh is like similar. It's turn-based. You get to select a card and then you summon the creature and it attacks the other person, right? Same thing here. Yeah, so turn-based. So basically what happens is you can see this arrow right here, right? Yeah, and it goes to each person and whatnot. Yeah, they've revised it. Um, the developers have definitely revised the game a bit and I'll go into that later. Cool. Among Us. So what this PowerPoint may have seemed very familiar, right? The graphics on here. So that's because Among Us. So Among Us is a social deduction game, which basically means you have to figure out who is the imposter, right? So basically what happens is there is there are two sides. There is the innocents, the crewmates, and then there are the imposters. There is a maximum of, I don't know if they've changed it, but two. When I played it, it was a maximum of two, maybe three. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like, what's it called? Oh my gosh, what's it called? Mafia kind of like mafia right um so oh, yeah. yeah social deduction game you have to figure out based on who they kill where they've killed them who's been where who's been doing what tasks you have to figure out who the killer is right before so basically you're just mm -hmm. like a detective kind of exactly yeah exactly just like in mafia except in mafia it's definitely more guessing and less like social deduction yeah yeah Cool. Um, so yeah, as I said, players are either crewmates or an imposter. The cool thing about this game is it's got a storyline to it. Um, basically, your ship has crashed or something. You need to restore it. So you do a bunch of tasks to restore it. But then um, while you're doing these tasks, you are under risk of being killed by the imposter who's trying to sabotage everything. Um, and they have the imposters actually have two powers they can either sabotage all command right all operations um they can like you know cause an emergency or they can just kill right yeah cool and it's a party game yeah um cool any questions so far i don't want to go into too much of introducing my games my favorite games oh yes question evan yes your question how do we turn this into a career how do you turn this into career? I'm actually about to get into that. So I was just about to say, I don't want to turn, I don't want to talk too much about um, the favorite games, right? I, we will get into like, you know, how we can turn this into a career very quickly. Sorry, let me just get through some of these games. So I'm going to, I, me talking about these games um, is, you're, you're going to see why I'm talking about these games in the first place. So Valorant, first person shooter games, right? Just like Capture the Flag, it's a mix of abilities and guns so basically you have some abilities you can use and that is supposed to help you and that's also there are things called lineups which is basically where um you have strategy strategic placement of your abilities okay i'm gonna move on quickly so stentil it's a multiply online adventure game um it is also kind of an rpg mm, more quest kind of quest driven you know the math game prodigy no i do not what uh. is it about I think it's like there's a ton of monsters and there's this uh, mm -hmm. evil person, I guess, mm -hmm. evil monster, and you're supposed to defeat every single monster and stuff like that. It's more like an RPG game then. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So and you're yeah, supposed to like you're yeah. supposed to during battle in order to attack, you're supposed to answer mm -hmm. like a math question at your grade level. Oh, that's so cool. That's great. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds like a good way to motivate kids to learn math. That's great. Wow. Yeah, that's that sounds like a cool game. I will check it out. Um, yeah, okay. So Stentil is based more off of old school Japanese RPG top-down graphics, right? You can see like it's top-down view. You're looking down at the map, right? You can see the ground and everything. And yeah, cool. I played that a lot when I was younger. Minecraft. I don't even need to explain this. One thing I will explain, though, very cool. Ah, one thing I want to brag about. I created this with my friends in creative mode. <laughs> Wait, what? <Okay. laughs> yeah, that's one thing I'm going to flex. I created this um, in creative mode. I know, lame. How we high is that? Mode. How high? It's not too high. I don't know how many blocks. I can't tell you how many blocks high it is, but yeah. It, it looks like it's taller than an entire mountain. No, no, it is not. I think it's the angle I took it at. 
Yeah. But thank no, you. It looks like it. it's <laughs> like it looks like it's on that hill, but then it's like two times as tall. Mm. It is two and times as tall. It's probably closer than than you think. So it's not a mountain. It's a. It's definitely a small little hill. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> okay, so this is a 3D sandbox, as we explained. Something cool about it, a game design element of it. It is procedurally generated maps, which means that um, it is de basically a virtually endless world. As you go, it will continue to procedurally generate. So it's programmed to then like um, generate maps based on textures, graphics, um, based on kind of the area that you're supposed to in. And it generates biomes as well, as I'm sure you guys know. I don't even need to get into this. You guys are probably nerds about this. So Roblox, we all know that about this. Um, Roblox, actually, perfect, seamless way to get into um, how you can turn playing Roblox games into a career. Roblox is actually based on the very concept of game developing. Roblox doesn't, I don't know if you've noticed, but Roblox Corporation doesn't actually create any games of its own. What Roblox Corporation does is it provides a platform for game developers to create games, and it also provides game players to them. Yeah, like if you get platform. into a game, it says mm -hmm. there's this game icon, and then mm -hmm. also yeah. uh, it says who it's from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And those are all game developers. They're not people from Roblox. Yeah. Roblox Corporation, Incorporation is what I mean. Yeah. But they also make some, you know, like Avatar mm -hmm. and your character. They make some of yes. those. Yes. They, they, they provide the assets that and the tools for you to build your games. Yeah, for sure. And so that's what we call a game engine. Yeah. So we'll get into that. Um, so this is called an online game platform and game creation system. Great for game developers. So we're moving on to our first activity. So think, think in terms of a game developer. What are some things you would want to change about your favorite games, right? This is how I first actually want, uh, discovered that I actually really like game design because I looked at my favorite games. And of course, there are things that we don't really like about them. Even though we love playing them, we enjoy playing them. There are things we want to change, right? So I want you guys to think about it right now. So take a moment, think about it, right? Think about some um, things you want to change about your favorite games. I definitely have a few things. I will go first and you guys can definitely add on because I know you guys have a, what's it called? Um, you Like for example, Minecraft and Roblox. I mean, not, not Roblox. You can't really change anything about Roblox, but Roblox games maybe. Um, but things you can change about Minecraft or whatnot, right? Um, so let me go back. So for example, um, I'm going to go really quickly. Wizard 101, it allows for smurfing a lot. A lot of these games allow for smurfing a lot. So it's not even specifically about Wizard 101. Valorant, definitely smurf, lots of smurfs. I actually have a friend who smurfs and boosts my friends and I. So ha ha ha. <laughs> but definitely something you would want to change in games, right? So smurfs are, um, sorry, I got a chat. I never realized. Have any of you heard of Omori? I have not. I will give you an opportunity to talk about it later, though. You can, you can nerd Wait, out, geek out about it. When does this class end? This webinar ends at 1230, but it's OK. We can go over. I will have time for Q&A. Yeah. OK. There is no strict um, time for when. Wait, are we yeah. ever going to talk something like, are we just going to talk about games or actually go into game design? We are going to go into game design. I haven't even gotten to the game design part. So that's why I feel like this will go over a bit. Um, okay. but yeah. So things that you can change in order to, um, you know, implement a better Smurf, not Wait, protection, prevention system. Yeah, what's up? Uh, like, if you want to change something, all you need to do is just like, uh, what? Depends on what it is. If you want to be mm -hmm. like changing, if you mm -hmm. want to change something like a ton, mm -hmm. and you're sure that when you grow up, it's still going to be trending, then you uh -huh. can just focus on that kind of topic and then keep on working until you get into that mm -hmm. game's company. And then you can yeah. change whatever you want. That's exactly much. right. That's exactly right. So actually, I wasn't even going to go into like infiltrating another company, but that's that's true. If you like a company enough and you want to work for it, you want to change things, you want to make changes, then yes, you can definitely infiltrate it like Ethan has suggested. Um, another way is if you see ways that games can be better, why not make your own, right? If you can see a way that Roblox 
a Roblox game could be better. Maybe its graphics aren't that good. Maybe yeah. it's gameplay isn't that great. Or maybe it's like, yeah, graphics. Yeah. So we, I think Roblox definitely should maybe have an update on its graphics. Um, but yeah. Um, or you can infiltrate a company, take over, conquer it, and make the changes yourself <laughs> to the existing game. I want to try and go indie first because later in life you can't take that risk. Yes, that is exactly right. So indie is basically when you're an indie developer. It basically is short for individual. So usually those are like small teams of up to like five, maybe ten. That is probably the biggest that an indie developing the indie indie developer could be. Yeah. Um, cool. Great. Like, if you get into college and then you want to mm -hmm. work in a group, isn't that just something like a club? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Um, but I think he means, I think Rohan means, like, um, go indie first in college. Like, while you're studying, you can then take up some side projects that are, like, you know, that you individually develop by yourself. Yeah. Oh. I think that's what he means. Yeah. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much into what I would um, change about other games, but for Smurf Prevention System, definitely track kills, track, you know, um, assists. Then that way you can see, you know, if there's a disproportionate amount of kills that they get in a game, they are definitely a Smurf, right? Cool. So I went first. I want, I'll, we'll be very quick about this. We'll take like maybe two minutes to do this. Okay. So two minutes, go ahead and you can name a few things about what you guys want to do or what you guys would change about some of your favorite games. You can say in a chat, you can unmute and scream at me one at a time. But yeah, does anyone have any ideas? Anyone? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, yeah maybe add some maybe change the combat system of some games like god of war 2018 mm. and like i feel like it didn't um live mm. up to the god of war 3 mm, i see i see they completely changed it i feel Mm, I see, I see. Yeah, definitely. If it's something like if it's something that developers change that used to operate well or function well, I definitely get hat that I can suck. Like, for example, um, Wizard 101, right? Term based combat system, it was great, but they changed it up quite a bit. The developers actually changed up the entire game quite a bit. It just completely lost focus on the entire objective of the game. And I, I abandoned it. I no longer play it. It's a very sad departure. But for example, if you add too many elements into a game, for example, it added, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of spell break. It added a very spell break like kind of element to it. And it just got very messy. Definitely with games, you should have one focus, one direction it's going, and then stick to it. If you add more, players Wait, get confused are there something, and it gets are messy. Are there such things like hacked servers? Hacked servers? Yeah. In Wizard 101? I'm not sure. In any game. In any game? Oh, you, I'm sure if, you know, hackers have the ability to do so, they could hack things. Yeah. Um, for example, in I've seen Valorant. memes for Brawl Stars, mm -hmm. which is currently my favorite game. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> every character inside has a Avengers skin. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, cute. There's some people, yeah, there's some people dressed as, I don't know. Thanos, I guess, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I see, I see. And then stuff like that. And then I'm like, that's not even possible. How? Mm. And they have like unlimited gold and stuff to spend. And then also. Uh, I see. Uh, mm. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, to people who actually know the game, it's mm -hmm. just wrong. Yeah. I see. Gotcha. Yeah. So that can actually also lead into like a pay to win kind of situation, right? So if you have like, for example, like Ethan was saying, people have like endless amounts of money on Brawl Stars and it's just wrong, right? So like, for example, in Wizard 101, we definitely have a more pay to win. If you can pay for gear, if you can pay for better weapons, like with real money, with real in real life money, right? Then you can then, you know, get further in Wizard 101, either faster or better, right? You can just be, you know, top. So it kind of just forces you into spending money. So yeah, this activity that we did, it shows that we all are game designers, right? We can all think of ways that we want to design 
ideas or ideas we want to implement in games. We want to change about games. So first, you need so, to, how to know how to create them. Yes, definitely. Like for Minecraft, you can use Java Edition, and then you mm -hmm. can uh, do stuff like that. Or you can go on to mm -hmm. Tinker.com and then create your own Minecraft like item mm -hmm. or customize one. Mm -hmm. I think you can only customize one if you're like not paying. Mm, I'm not I sure. See, I, see. I, I have a free version for Tinker. Uh, it's oh, a website for mm -hmm. coding and there's block coding and also mm -hmm. uh, stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've definitely heard of Tinker. Um, there's also Tinker CAD, which is where you can model. It's a block coding system and it's a 3D modeling system. So you can get into there and you can create your own Minecraft mods as well. You can create like um, oh yeah those models things. that you can import to minecraft yeah definitely great you can so you definitely need to check pay. those out you need to pay like 19.99 or... for tinkercad not for tinkercad tinkercad is really free yes it is definitely well, free. for tinker yeah. from what i know you need to pay like 20 dollars mm, yes that's tinker tinker is different tinkercad is a program tinkercad is a program that you can use and we actually have tinkercad um, classes, but Tinkercad is a program that you can use to like 3D model and then import those models into Minecraft. And it also helps you learn 3D modeling, which you can then use for game design. So I'm actually getting into that now. How are games made? So we have the ideas clearly. We just need the resources to make the them come to life, right? So Tinkercad, I'm really sad. I really should have included that here, but Scratch, right? Sorry, um, this is not correct. My slide is not correct. Ignore this. This is not popular, notable titles of Scratch. I don't know why I put that there. Um, Scratch. I can't really think of popular, notable titles for Scratch, but there are definitely featured projects that you can find on Scratch all the time. If you're new to programming, if you're young, um, if you just want to try it out, right? Um, you don't know if you like it or not then Scratch is definitely the great starting point for you, right? So Scratch is where you use block coding and also has a lot of great other tools that you can use. For example, it has a sprite editor, which is basically where you could design um, your own sprite. Um, a sprite is basically, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's a term for a game asset. In this case, it is a character, a game character. Sometimes that can be your player, sometimes it can be an NPC, by the way, I used NPC before I didn't explain it. NPC stands for non-player character. These are usually like automated like characters inside the game, right? Characters you can interact with, characters you can defeat, characters you can battle with or whatnot. Or in Minecraft, characters that don't move at all. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Creepers well, move a lot. From, a from little my too experience. much. <laughs> uh, I see. I from see. my experience, like mm. Minecraft, if you import, like if you just add an NPC, they just stand there. Oh, if you spawn one? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Maybe they just don't move quickly enough. Maybe they don't move enough. Maybe that's something you can change, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Speaking of but which... Then, I mean, if they yeah. actually move, then where would they go? Or if what they would they do? Move? Yeah, if they uh, actually move. Like, you might have to program them, kind mm -hmm. of like... uh, Like, mm -hmm. what? Coding a house. And you can just spot oh. an NPC and then tell the NPC to make a house. Kind of like that, mm, I guess. I see. Interesting thought. Yeah, you could definitely try to do something like that. Yeah. Um, I believe hmm, I believe we use, what is it called? Oh, tempted to say Minecraft education. Um, I believe one of our Minecraft teachers uses Minecraft education edition to make one of these NPCs create a house for you you can code it um and i think we also wait what about yeah IO we can games? talk about that later io games what yeah. about them uh, i think most of them are rpg yeah you mean how are they made yeah. no like generally like how you how you play them how you play them yeah um yeah like the genre we'll their genre, I think it depends. IO games can also have their own genres. For example, we have Crunker IO, right? And then we also have like Slither IO. Those are definitely different genres. Um, Crunker IO, first person shooter. Um, Slither IO, it's more of a uh, puzzle game. Yeah. P no, multiplayer. Multiplayer. Slither IO, 
which one am I thinking of? Snake IO? Snake IO is the one where you want to eat it and then you want to not bump into people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, right. So, what? Right. So, I made this game uh, mm -hmm. using. Let me type. Ooh. Wait, just look in chat. Look in chat. Yes, I'm looking in chat. I'm still typing. Ooh, Roblox. Nice. Oh, oh, that's Rohan. Rohan, Roblox game. Yes, you can set a price for a game. Yes, definitely. I'm in a game where you're the food and you want to escape the snake. Oh, that's very cool. That's very interesting. That's a that's a change in perspective. That's very cool. You definitely can do that. Definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. What I was thinking of a game. I don't remember, but it's kind of in a small space though. That's okay. That's a very cool game. If you want, you can link to it too. Okay, but I'm gonna move on. This is great talk, but I'm gonna move on just so I can wrap things up. Okay, so Roblox Studio. So remember, Roblox is basically a, just a game platform where you can create games, right? So Roblox Studio is the name of that game engine. By the way, I forgot to explain, what is a game engine? A game engine is something that you can use to create games, right? And it is fully supported by modeling tools, inbuilt modeling tools sometimes, and an asset store. So assets are basically just anything you put inside your game. That's what an asset is, right? Um, and um, also scripting system usually supports a full scripting system. Um, Roblox Studio, for example, supports Lua, right? And the great thing about game design, if you don't like programming, don't do programming, do audio design. If you don't like audio design, don't worry about it, do 3D modeling. If you don't like 3D modeling, don't worry about it, do um, art. If you don't like art, don't worry about it, do animation. If you don't like animation, don't worry about it, do uh, 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 scripting, right? <laughs> There's a bunch of things in game design. Like you don't have to do, um, you don't have to do programming. I know when everyone thinks of games, they're like, but if I want to make a game, I have to know programming. That's not true. If you if you want to be like the gameplay designer, if you want to be the game design where you decide what the game is about, what genre it's in, what storyline it follows, you get to decide that, right? You can you don't you don't have to you don't have to know programming. Programming is definitely a big plus, though. I can say that for sure. Um, in careers, I I actually at my internship, I have um, I have a coworker. He was telling me about his experience with um, applying to jobs. Definitely, programming will give you an upper hand. It is not the end all be all, right? But I do highly recommend learning a little bit of programming, getting a bit of technical knowledge, right? It helps you. It's not, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be your main focus, right? Your main focus can still be 3D modeling, but as long as you know a little bit of programming, that will up your chances, right? So, wait, but um, then I think you, like, yeah, for now, you programming is almost necessary because like in the future mm -hmm. uh ai is going to be developing fast mm -hmm. and so it's going to replace most of the jobs that people are doing right now mm, that's true that's but, true yeah mm -hmm. coding and programming is going to be very essential that's actually very true but you also have to think about the fact that ai can also um, replace programming yeah but the only part it won't replace, right, is just the AI part. Like if you um if you program an AI, of course, like if you're programming AI, then AI can't replace you. If you're programming you, an but... AI, you can like you can control what it does, kind of, mm -hmm. and yeah. maybe it, what jobs it can do. Yeah, true. Yeah, but um, if you think about it, AI could replace even programming jobs, right? Like it could it can self program and program you know more things, right? But yeah, definitely a danger to most of the jobs, but don't let that hinder you from pursuing what you actually want to do in game design, right? Like if you're good enough at it, AI can't replace you. Like a lot of these games require a lot of creativity, right? That's something that AI might not be able to replace, right? Like they might not be able to design 
a cool concept for a game anytime soon. So please don't be too scared. Don't be too scared. Don't feel forced to do programming, but programming is great, right? Think of other things you can do in technology, right? Yeah. Cool. So let me tell you about Roblox Studio. So supports the language Lua. Lua is pretty similar to Python. Um, some of you might be from Python classes at BCC, in which case then you have an upper hand, right? Um, you understand Python syntax, then you're good. You know Lua. Great. Let's move on. Any questions about Roblox Studio? By the way, I, I teach Roblox Studio um, at, at BCC. So if you're interested, definitely try and check it out. Um, but yeah, Roblox Studio, definitely recommend. Whether you get into it by yourself or whether you, you know, sign up for classes with BCC, I highly recommend trying out Roblox Studio. Very cool. Um, I've had a lot of my students be like, wow, I never knew it was so hard to, you know, create these elements of this game, like a shop. Like, for example, we created a shop system where they have money currency system. They have, you know, a physical shop. They have shop GUIs and whatnot. And they're like, wow, that was a lot of work. We got through it. I understand everything we did, but I didn't know it'd be, you know, it was that hard or it required that much work, right? And also it gives you a good perspective into how these things are made. Then when you play the games, you're like, wow, I know how this is made. And that's a really cool feeling, yeah. Um, and also it lets, gives you a chance if, for example, like we talked about before, right? It's the reason why we did the activity. If you don't like a certain Roblox game, but you like the concept, you can always improve upon it. Okay, of course, don't steal the idea. Please don't steal ideas. Plagiarism, not cool. But if you have an idea similar to it, or you know, you want to improve upon it, you want to add elements that it didn't have that you think would be great. If you learn Roblox Studio, you can do it. Okay, Unity. So Unity um, probably sounds familiar. It's a very, very, very oh, famous, yeah, popular um, it's engine. It's for using like 3D games. Yes, for 3D. Roblox Studio is also for 3D. The only thing that's not 3D that I'm covering is Scratch. Scratch is the only thing that's 2D. But Roblox Studio 3D, great introduction into 3D modeling, 3D games, right? It makes things very easy for kids. It's kid friendly because Roblox Corporation knows you kids want to get into game design. So it makes kid friendly tools. So why wouldn't you take advantage of that? So Unity, definitely a lot more complicated. The interface is similar to Roblox, right? But a lot, a lot, a lot more complicated. And that's just because it supports more niche things, right? That, you know, more advanced developers want to do. Um, for example, like maybe ray tracing, maybe like, I don't know if you know ray tracing, um, but it is just a tool for making, you know, more realistic graphics. Um, other things might be like, for example, um, Unity has a very good 3D, it has a lot of 3D tools, so you can create everything in 3D, or I mean, create everything in Unity. In Roblox, um, you could try, but a lot of the cases, a lot of the really cool, smooth 3D artifacts that you see in Roblox are unfortunately created in third party um, 3D modeling systems or programs. I can give you a few names. For example, Blender, another example, AutoCAD, another example. Oh, I don't know. Tempted to say, um, oh, tempted to say, what is it called? Mm, I don't know. I don't think this is actually a 3D modeling tool. So never mind. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so Unity, some notable titles, Valheim, Genshin Impact, Phasmophobia, League of Legends, Wild, uh, Wild Rift, the mobile version of Unity. Cool. Um, and then we'll move on to another one that's really popular. Sorry, chats. Or to use extensions. A good one I use is RA for build. Yeah, lots of extensions. Also available in Roblox Studio. Roblox Studio has a lot of extensions. Unity. Um, we do have some Unity courses coming out soon. So definitely check out for that. Um, but yeah, you can always feel free just to dive in straight by yourself too. But I would not recommend it if you are, you know, new to game engines. Unreal. So Unreal, um, also a very popular 3D engine. It is some notable titles, Fortnite, Final Fantasy VII, 
um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and then supported language. Ah, I forgot to go over that. Unity supports only C Sharp. They used to support JavaScript. Really sad. They only support C Sharp now. Yeah. So um, if you're interested, definitely get a hands-on C Sharp. So you can either do that by yourself, um, or you can, you know, you can sign up for courses here. Some good tools is, you know, signing for classes, or, you know, you can try and self-learn C Sharp. There are good tutorials, right? And stuff like that. Also, so Unreal C++ is a supported language. C++ is a little bit hard. It is a more memory-driven language, as in, like, computer memory-based. Um, yeah. And the popular titles, I already went over that, Fortnite biggest notable title, Fortnite. Yeah, if you notice, the interface is a little similar to Unity. So if you know Unity, easily transferable skills to Unreal. You just have to get used to it. All of, Everything is just about getting used to it and practice, practice, practice. And now how? Uh, now I'm going to tell you how you can get a hands-on, um, a, head, blah, 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 a step in the door, getting into gaming or game design. I'm mostly talking about game design, sorry. So getting started. So you might be thinking, what do I do? So some things you can do. Um, school slash activities. You can join school clubs or found your own. For me, I could not find a game design club in high school. So I founded my own and I met a really cool group of kids and it's actually still running. If you wanna check it out, you can. It's called Interlake Game Design Club, um, wonderful. You know, I'm so happy my legacy is still running because the president right now, she's also great. Yeah, she's running it great. Um, yeah, so school clubs, think, things about school clubs that are great. If you are not too keen on, you know, maybe seeking resources yourself or maybe, you know, finding competitions to join, definitely competitive, you know, game design is cool. It's not required. You can do it. It's an option. It's just something to get you motivated, right? Sometimes you might feel like, oh, you know, like I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start on my idea tomorrow. But if you're enrolled in a competition, there's literally a set deadline, right? You have to complete it by then to submit. If you don't submit it, you have empty hands, then, you know, it doesn't look so great for you, right? So then you're motivated to submit. So, the great thing about joining school clubs is they will find those resources for you. They'll bring those resources to you. They will teach you, right? And they'll um, they'll find those competitions for you to enroll in. And you'll be in a bunch of you'll be in the you'll be in a space and an environment with a bunch of peers. I found a bunch of great peers that I still stay in contact with. Um, they're definitely a source of motivation for me. And yeah, um, an example of a competition that I compete competed in. If you don't know, I am from Seattle, Washington. So I competed in a local competition. Our team did win a few awards. Um, our school actually closed out for the competition, which means like we won for all of 2020. Yeah. Um, and it's a local competition called Washington PTSA uh, Game Development Competition. Um, if you are located in Washington, you can join. I don't know about their rules for people outside of Washington. Yeah. Um, so what was I going to say? Um, yeah. So they have themed, there are themed competitions. Most of them are themed. And then there are some where you can just submit for fun. So they're also called game jams, right? So my internship, my company actually does game jams, um, so we do internal game jams, which are really cool. They can also be external, um, but yeah, game jams are just basically themed, sometimes themed competitions that you complete within like maybe a few weeks. And so those are like, they're called jams because they're very quick, like very quick paced and you have to get it done within a certain time, certain amount of time. Um, another thing you can do is enroll in coding or 3D modeling courses or audio design or whatever you want to pursue, whatever sector or area you want to pursue in game design. For example, PCC has a great has great resources. We have a bunch of game design courses, Scratch courses, um, Roblox courses, uh, Unity courses, Tinkercad, and we also have Game Design Club. So if you want to meet other people like you, then you can like like-minded people, you can join game design club. Cause I know, unfortunately in middle school and elementary school, um, there aren't as many clubs that you can join like school clubs that you can join. Um, so this is a great resource. Of course you don't have to join, like, you know these aren't the only resources, right? Um, you can also pursue like maybe, like I said, 
online tutorials, right? Like YouTube. Um, but I find that most students, they try YouTube tutorials, but then they end up coming to our courses because it's just hard. It's not as interactive or it's just very fast paced. Yeah. So those are definitely the resources that you can pursue. So self-learning, right? Some things you can do. Practice makes perfect. Explore, 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 right? So um, this can be practiced by yourself. This can be practiced outside of classes. I always try to encourage my students to practice outside of classes. Um, like, you know, Roblox Studio, you're not going to get familiar with it just from me holding your hand and telling you what every single thing does, right? It's through a lot of practice and through a lot of our classwork and our, a lot of our, like, you know, the projects that we make in classes that helps um, get you familiar with the games and the resources and the game engines. But yeah, does anyone have any questions so far? Anyone, anyone, anyone? Yes, no, maybe so. Anyone have any questions about resources that you can look for? In college, for example, you can find a game design major. Yeah, also, I know I've been uh, very uh, um, hush hush about like, I, I'm, I'm saying like, you know, I'm an internship at, at like a certain company. Um, just for privacy reasons, I don't like to disclose it. But if you are curious, it is called Games for Love, right? It is an organization, great organization. Um, not, I am... I do have to remain a little hush hush about the projects just because we're getting demo ready for some of, for for example, the project that we're getting ready for. Um, but I can tell you a little bit about the game. It is a VR game. I'm not too familiar, too familiar with VR development. I'm just familiar with Unity. Yeah. So um, it is being built in Unity. So that's something I can tell you. I can't tell you about the concept of the game though. Yeah. But it is very cool. If you want, you can, I can give you my email and I can definitely give you, um, let's see, this is my email. So if you are curious, you can send me questions on here. And there is also the Bay Coding Club email. I, I also checked this one because I am a teacher here at Bay Coding Club as well. Um, do I recommend schools and courses? Rankings on how they stand in game design and alumni for big gaming companies. Ah, so my school actually has a game design course or game design major, it's called a focus in game design. Um, but it doesn't matter too much about which schools you go to. So I go to, for example, University of Toronto, I almost said Washington, University of Toronto. They have a great, mostly just look for, it depends on which one, what you're trying to get into. If you're going for CS, I can only really tell you about great schools for CS because those were the only schools that I, I obviously looked for, right? Um, so Uni University of Toronto is a great school for CS, um, definitely top ranking, number one in Canada, I believe. And it is top in like world, attempt to say top 10, top 20. Um, University of Washington, local school for me, um, wonderful CS program, amazing. Um, they're definitely, all these schools that I'm naming are definitely very highly competitive. Um, I don't know if UW has a game design major, but it has a great CS program. Um, but probably one thing that, uh, hmm. yeah, I, I won't get too much into it, but um, RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, a lot of my fellow interns come from there and they have a specialized game design program, which is really cool. I got accepted there. I chose not to go it, because it is just very, very expensive because it's a private school. Um, but RIT, Ra Rochester Institute of Technology, I believe it's game design program specifically is number seven in the US, in the world. But that may also just be because there are few game design specialized programs. Ah, um, MIT, of course, right? Any school that you can think of that's high ranking in terms of CS is great. MIT, we actually have a few MIT teachers here um, at Game Bay Coding Club. So you can ask them for their experience and whatnot. Um, getting in, I mean, um, what else? MIT, uh, what else is good for CS? Cornell, Cornell University, all the Ivy Leagues, basically, all the Ivy Leagues that you can think of. Um, if so, most of the um, game design companies are centered, stationed in California, of course, right? 
So Bay Coney Club, part of California, Bay Area. So you could probably ask Ruby about it. She's she's literally stationed in like Silicon Valley. That's where all the great um, coding companies or, you know, coding schools are or uh, great um, startups, uh, game companies are, right? Game studios. So for example, there is, gosh, I'm thinking, there is Riot Games, which creates um, League of Legends and Valorant, uh, very famous. And then also we have in Seattle, actually, um, a few game studios. There's one Bungie and there is, I'm tempted to say 343 Industries. I don't know if they've been acquired. There's been a lot of game studios being acquired. So I have no clue what's been acquired, what is no longer, you know, existent. It's sad, yeah. Um, sad, but sometimes it can also be good. Um, what else? Yeah. What so, about Clash of Clans uh, maker company? Uh, Super I know so. Clash of Clans is very, um, very popular, but I've never gotten into it. I've never figured it out. Do you know their developers? Supercell. I don't. I'm not familiar with that company. Yeah, I'm sorry. It search it up. Okay, let's search it up. <laughs> they also created Brawl Stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. True. That's true. Yeah, Clash of Clans is very popular among my students. And also, they created like three more games in the past two months. That's really uh, cool. I think one of them is still in beta. Two of them are already, are already out. Mm. Ah, so they're actually stationed from in Finland. So I do know the game, um, the game developing scene is very, very strong in Europe. Very strong in Europe. Um, I know, I know, yeah, I know there's an entire like game association for Europeans in Europe. There is um oh, there is this one really I'm thinking. There's this game development competition. Very it's worldwide, very famous. It is in it is in Europe. I'm thinking, what is it called? God, I'm gonna cry. It is not Kai. It's not Kai Play chi, or Chi Play. C H I, that is also another one. It's hosted by Google. That's how I know it's not station. I think I got the name. It's like Be Beva or I'm gonna search this up. Let's search it up. Sorry, I've paused screen share just because um um Be game development competition Europe. What is it called? But yeah, they have an entire federation, like European Games Developer Federation. And if you notice, um I, for one, have used uh, Unity YouTube tutorials a lot. Um, and a lot of them are from Europe. So the scene there is very strong. Oh, I'm so tempted to say Beva. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, but just trust me. It's pretty strong there. Yeah. Um, cool. OK. Does anyone? So did I answer your question all right, Franco? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, anyone have any other questions? It is Q&A time, by the way. I forgot to switch my slide. But yes, it is Q&A time. So feel free to ask me any questions. Um, if you have any questions or you want to enroll in our classes, info at baycodingclub.com. Our numbers there are, are linked to our, you know, uh, websites there. Also, um, this presentation template, beautiful, among us themed, of course, and it was created by Slides Go. Very beautiful, I loved it, yeah. Cool, but now I'm completely open to questions. Um, I'm sorry I went a little over time. I hope you guys did not mind. I'm very sorry. Thank you, Yixing. Anyone Thank has you. any question about um, design games or attending our uh, Bay Coding Club Game Design Club? We meet once a week and we have a coach and you can meet with your peers. And we have Minecraft club, Roblox club, mm -hmm. um, studios that you can talk with. And we also have the robotics clubs and uh, um, the Python club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I saw some someone. No problem, just... Pooja. Yes, no problem. Yeah, I thank you so much right. for attending today's webinar. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, any question, just shoot the email to info at baycodingclub.com as mm -hmm. the screen shows and also can call us. All right, thank you, Yixing. I thank believe you, Ruby, there, for um, having me. Yeah, I believe there are uh, some questions from the parents. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah, one of the uh, the big concern is um, if they learn the game design. Um, yeah, uh, is it doesn't mean they play a lot more games than they ever play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the only one uh, question I think I brought to you to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, I believe that's actually not the case because if you channel their energy towards like game design, then I feel like they would have less time to play actual games and stuff. But yeah, um, that's a good question. Game design, um, my experience with my students is they get a lot more interest in the design aspect actually. So I actually had one student who is a little bit tired of Roblox, but instead they're really excited about designing games in Roblox. Um, he was actually confiding in me. He was telling me, I'm not going to name it. Um, he was tell, telling me that he was, you know, um, feeling very tired of Roblox games and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, um, why don't you give, you know, Roblox Studio a try, you know, let's create, you know, maybe what used to be one of your favorite games in Roblox. And now he loves it. He's so excited about Roblox Studio. Um, he loves Roblox Studio. He, he gets, we, we, um, this was also the class that I created the shop GUI thing in, and he, it was actually one of his requests to create the shop, um, and he loves it. He's like, wow, I didn't know it was this hard, and I, I think it's really interesting. I now know how this is created, and, you know, like, once you, once you find, um, like, once you discover how games are in made, it definitely piques your interest into more things about how how more things are made right and it also channels your energy towards you know creating the games instead of playing like yeah i think if anything it helps you notice more flaws in games um like for example i've definitely noticed a lot more flaws in wizard 101 so that's why i dropped it yeah yeah and i've yeah I, i've also dropped roblox games just because i've also noticed some flaws in Roblox games and just because I found that it can be very cyclical those games so I think it's very interesting once you get more of a designer aspect of it then you 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 get kind of less humble and you're like huh I can make a better game or like you're like huh it's it's not as good as I thought you know yeah so it's interesting it could go both ways i do acknowledge that it could like maybe they're they get more interested in games and they're like oh my god i love games like i'm gonna play a bunch more games it could go that way but it's likely that it won't like i think the amount of passion and interest they had for games beforehand that'll just either stay the same or you know yeah yeah thank redirect you their attention towards creating games instead yeah Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. the most important thing is just um, triggers your interest. If mm -hmm. once you have the interest and you have a lot mm -hmm. of attention in that, and then you can, the yeah, it can get you to go to the right way. Um, yeah. yeah, instead of, yeah, doing, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. very excellent project. Mm -hmm. All right, um, yeah, I believe Yixing has a lot of experience about um, the internship of our, he, uh, her um, game design. In the mm -hmm. future, maybe Yixing will just give you more insightful of the um, mm -hmm. game designs or other uh, courses because Yixing also teach Python um, and uh, other uh, courses at Bay Coding Club. If you want to know more, just uh, log on our website and there are some introductions and uh, you can do a lot of exploration. Okay, mm -hmm. I believe, I think if you don't have any comments or uh, questions, I think we, we are about uh, to I'll finish today's webinar. Yeah. Is that okay, Yixing? Yes, that is completely fine with me. Mm -hmm. But thank you, Ruby and Big Coding Club for hosting me. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Yixing. All right. Thank you all for attending today. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. all. All right. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Hope you join Bye. us next time. We have a, a next time webinar a next Saturday at the same yes. time. Yeah. yeah, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. See you.